And now we're going to talk about some old school accounting ideas. We will talk about footing the accounts. We will talk about the idea of the trial balance. And then finally, we'll be able to talk about the general journal. Do you remember from the prior video how we found the results of each of these accounts? We got the total debits and total credits and put them together and the result we put on only one side. Well, what was that process and how was it done? That process is called footing the accounts and footing the accounts means find the total debits, find the total credits, put them together and find the ending balance. For example, let's imagine we have a T account for cash or some asset and every time you had a plus to cash you put it on the debit side and every time you had a minus to cash you put it on the credit side. Then during the month you accumulated transactions. Well how could you know your result at the end? What you would do is you would take the total of the credits and then you would take the total of the debits and then you would combine them. For example, this account has a total of $25 in credits and it has a total of $60 in debits. So the debits in this case are more than the credits so the account will finish with a debit balance when you subtract the two. That debit balance is the ending balance and that's the number that would begin the balance of the account starting in the next month. You would use the same procedures to foot an account that has the opposite behavior, like a liability. We all know that the bank loan is minus for debit and plus for credit. So if you borrowed money, you'd put it on the credit side. If you paid off money, you'd put it on the debit side, and so on. At the end of the month, the T-account bank loan would have a balance that you would have to find out. You would do the exact same procedure. You would find the total credits. You would find the total debits. And in this case, the credits are slightly more than the debits. So that when you combine the debits and credits, the resulting number goes on the side of the higher one. So in this case, the bank loan is going to finish with a $5 credit balance, and that will be the number that the T-account begins with at the beginning of the next month. Now in the days before the computer, we did not use accounts that look like a T. In real life accounting, in the old days, this is the way the accounts looked. The T account would not show you the balance after each transaction and it didn't really have a space to put in all the information across the row about each transaction. So the accounts really looked like this and if you had a transaction that made the balance go up you would simply add it. If you had a transaction that made the balance go down you would simply subtract. This way you would know the balance after each transaction and you would also know the balance at any given moment in time. For example, you can see that September 17th we owed $75. But if I asked you how much did we owe exactly on September 12th, well September 12th is not listed in the date column. So you would go back to the last transaction before September 12th, find that balance, and then you would know the balance on a particular day and time. Using the accounts like this helped bookkeepers record more detail and keep more accurate track of the balance. And when the accountant would come in to find the results at the end of the month, the accountant would simply know bank loan is a liability and this $5 is a credit balance. Now, footing the accounts was only the first step in the process of finding the results at the end of each month. After you found the results, you would put the ending balance of each account in a report called the trial balance. 
The trial balance is a report that shows the results of all accounts. And if the account had a debit balance, it would be listed on the debit side of the trial balance. And if an account had a credit balance, it would be listed on the credit side of the trial balance. And as you can see, the trial balance would give you some information about how your business is operating. But this data, when it's in the trial balance, is in its raw form. You were not finished when you made a trial balance. But one of the reasons you made the trial balance is to make sure that the debits equal the credits after the entire process of recording the transactions, putting them in the T accounts, finding the balances, and putting the balances up in the trial balance. We came up with this system of debits and credits thousands of years ago to make sure that we did not make any mistakes when recording transactions or doing the math to find the results. Remember, accounting procedures were derived in the days before the computer. And although you can see some things about the business operation simply by looking at the trial balance, you would gain better insights into what is happening with the business if you took the numbers from the trial balance and reorganized them into documents called financial statements. And I'm sure you've all heard the names of the typical common financial statements. These are the documents that we look at in order to make a judgment about how well the business is doing and to make certain business decisions. By taking the numbers from the trial balance and organizing them into these financial statements, the numbers present a more clear picture of what's going on in the business. Now, in the days before the computer, the T accounts were not the original books of entry. Instead, you had something called the general journal. And if you wanted to record transactions here, you needed to know your debits and your credits. That's because the transactions would first be recorded in the journal. And when you record transactions in the journal, you would write down which account will be debit and which account will be credit. Then later, you would do what's called posting. That means copying each transaction from the journal to its appropriate T account and putting in the appropriate debit and credit. You would not post after each transaction. The whole point of the journal would be to record everything on one paper to save time. Then at the end of the time period when you wanted to assess your results you would post all the debits and credits into the T accounts and if you did that correctly the results in the T accounts would be the same as if you put the numbers in there directly like we did earlier. Then of course you would foot the results of the T accounts and then again take the ending balance of each account and put it in the trial balance. So now you know the accounting cycle perfectly. We start with transactions that we would record in the general journal. Then we would post from the journal to the T accounts that we have been working with. Then we would foot the T accounts and put those results in a report called the trial balance. And then of course we would take the numbers from the trial balance and put them on financial statements so people can look at those documents and understand what's going on with that business.